title to TechCrunch is a database of startups. Last year, 838 startups using AI at Crunchbase. In the last five years, VC investments increased sixfold, and that equated to $1.5 billion of investment. So AI startups are really hot. Look, while we were all kind of trying to do apps and stuff in 20... <laughs> Uh, this is a thought bubble. Future technologies. Thank you, Microsoft. Where are you? Can you plug it back in? Guys, it's gone off, do you know? Did somebody kick the cable out? Thank you. Okay, so while we were all doing apps for startups, 2014, the venture capitalists were investing in, in artificial intelligence. Two, maybe even getting on three years ago, right? So they knew what was happening. And already last year, it was always already up to the same amount. So you can imagine what's going on now. So why is investing in it? Because deep learning neural networks solve very complex problems. Okay, why now? Vast increase in processing power, fuel, data, digitization, internet of things, Moore's law, computing power doubles every two years. Now here's a fun graph. Here we are, 2000. Here we are, 2020, we're about here. That's uh, the one mouse brain. So we've, just got, we've got one mouse brain. Yay, us. One mouse brain. And then human brain, about 2030. One human brain, general artificial intelligence. And then all human brains, 2060. Okay? Set your clocks running. Okay? Let's see if this happens. Because that's the prediction. And you said, my God, you. You don't know what you're talking about. There's the graph, okay? There's the graph. Thank you. Okay. Now, think about this. What does it mean? This is a Cray computer from uh, 1985. Cray computer, cost a lot of money, quite heavy, bit tough to carry around. You know, put it on your back, maybe. <laughs> bit tough. Um, 25 years later, Exactly the same amount of computing power fits in your pocket. $400, 400 grams, 1.7 gigaflops. Five years later, fits on your hand. Okay? So that's how fast this stuff is moving. And there's the graph, how fast it's going, right? Fits on a wrist. Price per trans transfer, sorry, price per transistor is falling all the time. Transistors made per year is skyrocketing, and there are more transistors made every 0.1 seconds than there are stars in the galaxies. There are a ton of these stuff. 44 times increase in data. That's why this is happening. And it's all, it's all down to what's happening is Mark Andreessen from Andreessen Horowitz, the most influential venture capitalist firm in Silicon Valley, he says software is eating the world. And that's exactly what is going on right now. Exactly what's going on. So, AI is getting your crops in, it's getting you off parking tickets, and it's even starting to create songs. An AI future is inevitable. Here's Spot the Dog from Boston Dynamics. Isn't he cute? It might be a she, I'm not sure. Can I tell? No. Um, <laughs> such a cool grid. Um, so the trouble with AI though is it's really specialised. It can really only do one thing at a time and one thing really well. You know, everyday tasks, 
it's bad at doing things that you're really good at, like doing the washing up and talking to your friend and booking a flight and making breakfast, etc., etc. It can't do that much. Right? It can't emote. It, it can't. Sing a song. Summer chocolate evening. You may get a stranger. Understand to learn. It can't handle. It can't handle a situation it hasn't encountered before, and it can't range of broad, broad range of situations. Set its own goals. It can't feel right now. It can't feel right now. But in narrow domains, it exceeds or betters being. It's better at detecting errors in photographs. It's better than you at playing games. Much better than you at playing games. Sorry, guys. Um, it's better um, large parts of driving, as we said earlier. In fact, uh, crash times are falling because of the uh, capability of the Tesla to learn how to drive. And what happens, so what happens then? If we get all this stuff, what happens then? If you're a business and you apply artificial intelligence to your business, you get something called AI lock-in, okay? Application of AI makes a better product. That product creates more data, better data. The, the, the money you get from making that better product you put into the AI, you get more profit as a result of making a better product. product. You put that money back into the AI again, which again makes better products, and so on, 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 right? So there's no way you can go, oh, it was fun having the AI in the business, wasn't it? Uh, let's get rid of it now. No, ain't gonna happen. It will become an integral part of every business. And I can recommend an extremely good web, uh, newsletter, Exponential View, written by a friend of mine, Azim Nazar. Great, great newsletter. It talks about artificial intelligence all the time. But you know what? I'm, I'm fed up with talking about this. Let's talk about love. Yeah? Let's talk about love. They're going, he's crazy. Crazy Englishman. What's going on now? Hello? You are into the twilight zone. There's no going back now. Let's have a little experiment. You are really bad at dating, guys. What's going on with your dating lives? Huh? What's going on with your dating lives? Um, I don't know. So. How about you? No dating. Who's dating? Who's dating here? Dating, right? Let's go and talk to these dating people. You dating? How's the dating going? Good. No, I probably is. Yes. Do you, do you use Tinder or anything? No, no, don't need Tinder. No. How about you, man? Can I pass the mic? Tinder is fine. Yes, okay. We're going to talk about that. Right now, you guys are really bad at dating, and uh, you need help, basically. I'm sorry, but you need help, and I'm here to help you, okay? Here's the issue, right? Yes, you can clap. Thank you. Yes. Yes, oh. Are you okay? Somebody give that lady a hug. The dating's not going as well. AI, AI is going to help you get the dating right. Okay? It's 
better at matching you than you are. Right? AI is your friend. AI is going to be your friend. Found you your true match. Because AI plus your data, your, this is a terrible track, wasn't it? Uh, what was it, Saturday or something? Uh, Spotify is your next date. How excited are you? Yeah, yeah, you happy? You're pregnant. Yeah. You're pregnant, the dating worked. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. Did you need an AI with that? Not really. Oh, okay. Okay, you're my bad example. I need someone in these Um That's your next date. So, here's what happened. A researcher took artificial intelligence uh, and our algorithms and AI and applied it, predicted attraction on Tinder with 68% accuracy. Yeah? You need those odds, don't you, in your dating lives? Don't you? You need those odds. And, um, and now, there's a Tinder box. Now, this is, the guys are going to be into this. The guys are going to love this. Because guys are really bad at talking. Bad, like, so bad at... Like, you message them and they go, Yeah, hi. How are you today? Okay. Do you want to go out? Maybe. <laughs> guys are so bad. Uh, Tinder box chat. Select profiles you'd like and starts chatting. So girls, be careful. You might be chatting to an artificial intelligence. Because that here's what how, how that works, right? So, um, are you a fan of avocados? Um, yeah, actually I am. I really like avocados. You wanna come to a guacamole party with me? Oh, that's so witty. <laughs> So witty! Ding! Oh, oh, she said, oh, she, she wanted to go to a guacamole party. Cool, okay. We're on. Guys, guys, I've got to reply. So, notify us your, your many impacts. That's artificial intelligence. That's going to start affecting your lives. iMessage. Who said iMessage? Um, so now there's some. Sorry? Don't worry. We'll do a ballot hole. We'll, we'll do a session later. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, burning AI, let's say, uh, scans your profile to see, make you better. Remember, augmenting humans, making humans better. Scans your profile to find the better photographs. Blink picks the best photos for you. Because you don't go bad at picking good photographs. You think, you think that one of you in the bathroom, like that, with the turd in the bathroom, like in the toilet, looks really good. Turns out not so good. Um, better than a human. Blink was way, way better at telling somebody's age, and that would just improve. And here is a demonstration by MIT, which can read your mood. It can work out if you're happy or sad, and the people who are happy were rewarded, and the people who are sad were not. coming to a dating app near you. And finally, so let's finally, let's play a little video. Where does this technology go, right? Let's have a little think. Oh, shit. This is a sad video, but it's okay. We just want to demonstrate the potential for artificial intelligence. Do light, you can see. I've got my new augmented reality headset. Ladies and gentlemen. It sticks in your ear. With a little camera. Can read your face. It's helping me in my daily life. 
感受，消耗，传递。要不你只是我一个品质的。Daylight， 带你看世界。You wanna get one? Yeah. It's cool, huh? Sorry, it doesn't exist. But it probably will, because all it needs to do is sit in your ear with a camera and tell you what's going on around you. Now that is a fantastic de demo for something to help a disabled person, a blind person. But there's nothing to say you couldn't use that technology as well, because the AI plus robotics plus machines plus you makes you more powerful. And where is that going to end up? Snap spectacles, huh? Right? That's going to be interesting when we're walking around with that. Snap, why do you think I'll wear spectacles now? Because I just want you to get used to it. Okay? Snap spectacles from Snapchat, the new product from Snap, was called Snapchat, now called Snap, which will record Snapchats up to your account from your glasses. And of course, we can embed, eventually embed, AI into that and tell you things about the world you didn't know before. But anyway, you know what? It's all very well talking about AI and the future and us and how we're going to get better. But why is there no fun? We need fun. Let's have fun. Remember fun? Us plus AI, plus machines, plus new technology. We can make beautiful music together. So ladies and gentlemen, let's make beautiful music with our future overlords, our future brothers and sisters in AI. This is some music made by an AI and with humans overlaying a melody. So ready? After me. Ready? Have to clap. Come on. You can sing this in the bar later. Come on, stand up. Stand up. Come on. Come on, stand up. So you can sing this song. Whether you're going to call it quantum computing, 
whether you're going to call it uh, God knows what else, you know, that's, that's effectively where we're going to get to. Um, that sort of thing. So, but yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't go into it. Because my point was about, like, what are the practical effects of all of this stuff? So that's what I'm But it's a good point. That's good. Question number. Well, they have to become. They have to become technology institutions. They have to. Every business on the planet has to become capable of having its own platform, its own technology. If it doesn't, it won't survive. It's very simple. Uh, the uh, banks right now are uh, doing lots of things like wooing you to events to crazy conference speakers because they want, they need people, they need talent to produce these new technologies, these new platforms of the future. Um, in the UK right now, there is a sweating like a pink cord. Make up, make up. Um, there's uh, there's a, a startup co- uh, startup banks now called uh, Monzo, which is built entirely as a brand new startup bank. Which um, you know, most of the most of the apps that banks give you are not very good. This is a brand new startup bank that tells you where you bought stuff. It tells you your spending, it tells you information, data, uh, location-based transactions. It's really, really cool, really useful. They couldn't do that if they hadn't built it themselves. And that's a, a new kind of startup bank that will threaten the big and incumbent banking systems out there, banking institutions. Good point. Can I also ask, have you heard, of course, of Lemon 39? Yeah, it's in London. Yeah. In London, yes. And uh, what is the future of corporate banking in your opinion? Are the banks going to open up their systems to become innovative? Um, the banks are generally kind of loath to do that kind of thing. Um, in truth, most startups do actually have to work within the strictures of a, an existing, the existing banking system, right? The, the really new startups are going through their own banking license, so their own bank, and they can do their own technology as long as it fits in with the payment platforms, payment mechanisms uh, of the existing ones out there. Corporate banking, I don't know, I hope it kind of goes and dies, really, because I can't stand corporate banking. Um, uh, but, um, or investment, I think it's the investment banking that we all can't stand. Um, but uh, the, the, the issue, the main issue is, is that is that the existing banks, probably what will happen is somebody will get scale and then they'll get bought, or someone will get scale and raise enough money to capital to become to really start to threaten the big ones. Thank you. Yeah, question number three. First of all, for the lecture, but my question is about bots. So there's a lot of talking about bots in general, and uh, uh, I don't know. It has the bots been talking to you on Tinder again? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, so the question is: Do you believe that the concepts are overestimated and uh, actually are useless, or do you believe in the future of bots? Well, I think what you do, what you got to do, is like when you're talking about like a chatbot or something. Mm-hmm. Bots are really useful for creating a new kind of user interface. Now, what's our existing user? What, what, what did we start with, you know, say 10, 15 years ago? A web, web page, which not everybody really likes dealing with, right? And then you've got mobile apps, which are much simpler and easier to use because the UI is simpler. Now, bots can just talk like a, your friendly, you know, friendly neighborhood neighbor, whatever, you know. How are you today? Mike, yeah, great. Um, what's my balance today? Um, it's uh, this. Um, do you want to do anything? Uh, well, you know. Um, can you transfer some money for me over to this account? Yeah, sure. How much? You know, like a human being. And I think that's, it's just a user interface. Um, there are startups now that are starting to use bots to work out how to become more intelligent as a, a part of a wider platform. 
So this is starting in Silicon Valley called Brazilian Beans, um, who have released lots and lots of little out, um, AI bots out into the wild, and they're going to see which ones will survive, and then which ones survive, they will make more of, and then release them, and which ones survive from that, they make more of, so that the platform gets more and more intelligent, right? Eventually, it takes over your job. Thank you for this interesting lecture. Uh, do you think that uh, technology will uh, change social interactions and politics and democracy? Because now we have more information, we can process it better, but we still have the same system as like a long, a long time before. How do you think the technology will change or it will not change at all? Well, um, it sort of already has, kind of. Um, uh, the US election was in massively influenced by uh, social media and a lot of that stuff was done by um, uh, bots actually, by uh, uh, Facebook pages, um, automatically generating Facebook pages, automatically generating Twitter bots uh, that would uh, uh, target individuals because it's very hard to do this kind of stuff at scale, you need technology. Right? So it already has done that, uh, number one. Number two, um, will we'll, uh, we get more direct forms of referendum, for instance, you know, I want to vote for someone on my hand. I mean, you can do that in Estonia right now, you can vote online, I'm not sure if you can vote on a mobile, but you can certainly vote online instead of from your house, effectively. Um, which, but you can do that in Estonia with only a million people, a little bit harder with millions and millions of people, hundreds of millions of people. Yeah, but using bots you can exploit the system, right? Are you a hacker? <laughs> I've heard about you Russian hackers. <laughs> um, look, uh, and look, that would be the ideal world, right? But we've got to get the policy makers on board. We need to be able to explain to them what's going on. We need to explain uh, that, um, that they will get a better society if they embrace the technology in this way. So, I th yes, I think it would be, that would be the ideal scenario. Unfortunately, at the moment, I think that to some extent we have to be wary about the influence of technology on our democracy. And actually, a lot of people are now saying, especially after the US election, that maybe we should just go back to paper because you know, we can't have paper. Yeah, but still we'll have the same like, problem. This guy's not giving up, is he? <laughs> yeah, but still we'll have the same problem. Next question. Uh, don't you think that it's going to be something like a war because Right now, startups are going not to mobile or internet, they are going to offline old school industries like cars, transportation, energy, healthcare. And on one hand, we have government with tons of regulations and with tons of lobbyists from old, old school corporations. Uh, and government needs votes and old corporations need some regulations to stop startups and venture capitalists. And on the other hand, we have like young startups and entrepreneurs and venture venture banks. So, what is going? What will you think? How it will look like? Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, that the initial wave of entrepreneurship in technology wasn't uh, against traditional incumbent industries. It was, like, it was creating new kinds of platforms like social media that didn't exist before. Yeah. Now. You're correct. And now it's going after healthcare, transportation, logistics, you know, you name it. Um, but then that's just natural because you can't stop. Technology is having to become part of those sectors anyway. And all of those sectors now realize that they can't compete without effectively becoming tech companies in their own right. So you can't stop it. It's not going away. You can't turn back the clock. So um, but they are trying, like FDA started to regulate mobile apps uh, for fitness just this year. So it's a blocker for also startups, I think, in the world. Well, I think the best kind of regulation is is, uh, uh, is you know, light touch and beneficial. So okay, you've got a fitness app. Let's make sure that people using this fitness app don't have a heart attack because they're going too fast and they're, you put, they put in their age and it turned out they were going too fast and they were happy. 
drop down dead. I mean, that's kind of fair enough to some extent. Where it gets weird is where they, uh, you know, the government regulations, etc., uh, stop innovation, right? So you're right. And in a way, that's happening in the music industry because in music rights, there are no real, uh, very, very few music startups because all the rights, the copyright, is held by the music labels. Very hard to innovate because of that reason. Thank you. I have a question. Hi. Hello. Thanks, Mike. Um, you mentioned Snap Spectacles, and I remembered Google Plus. Do you agree that it failed, and why? Very good question. Do you know a guy called Robert Scoble? You know him? He's kind of like an old, older guy. And he's like really geeky. Yeah, he loves technology. Um, but he's a very he's an intelligent man, a smart guy. But um, all the point with Google Glasses is that they put, they gave Google Glass to all these super geeky people. Like, Google Glass, Google Glass, Google Glass, and point them everyone. Right? That's not cool. Right? And um, everyone hated it because they were pointing a camera at somebody and it was just geeks using it. Snapchat or Snap is going opposite direction. They are putting up, popping up random ven vending machines in Los Angeles or on the beach and just giving them out to kids, um, millennials, or you guys really, and saying, you know, just go and play with it, have fun. They're not giving it to geeks. And that's why that will succeed. Google Glass failed because well, number one, who wants a big cinema screen in the top right hand of your view all the time? Nobody. Um, and the other other reason is there's no social there's no social element to it. Snapchat, Snap, Snap Spectacles, highly social, totally social. All of those things, those Snap Snap Spectacles will be um, used in parties, holidays, vacations, just fun things. Yeah. And it's going to become an enormous platform for video uh, because it's so easy, it's fun, it's it's not geeky, it's mainstream, or it's it's something that cool kids like to do. Yeah? And that's how that will get adopted. So that's why. It, and also, it doesn't cost one and a half thousand dollars, which is what Google Glass did. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We will see. Any other last questions? One, two. Three. Well, yeah. Okay. Hi, Mike. Hi. Uh, well, my question would be not about the technology. You were the one having trouble with dating, weren't you? Yeah. Well, uh, Tinder was not that successful. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think the bots are fair. Yes, exactly. The bots weren't fair. Like, you know, 
telling you to do push-ups and stuff. I've got a talent, I never do them. Um, I, I do this in the bar. That's my, that's my exercise. Um, but I've got a very strong forearm as a result. Um, but the, you, you've got to look after yourself in the end. You're absolutely right, yeah. But what, what's really interesting, let me, let me uh, throw this at you. Magic Leap is a technology which um, has, they, what they've done is um, they are going to project an image into the back of your eyeball, yeah, so that you perceive images as if they were real in front of you. So I don't watch at the screen? No. No, the screen comes to you into the back of your eyeball. How cool is that? Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, you're not focusing on anything, you're just seeing, you know, a whale appear or something like that. Something weird, yeah? A zombie running at you. Do you like zombies? A, um, a kind of a, a, a machete-wielding zombie. Um, <laughs> oh my god, where am I going with this? Um, so, the point is, is that um, nobody, no, the idea, that's why I think that's partly why Google Glass failed, because um, it actually takes a helicopter pilot about 80 hours of flight time to be able to fly with a head-up display in one eye and be able to see out the other. That's 80 hours of flight time training on a head-up display with a helicopter pilot. Now, Google tried to put that in front of ordinary people with no training, and no, nobody was used to it. So, obviously, that was going to fail, and the reality is, is that no big technology maker or manufacturer, like Apple, for instance, will come out with a technology again like Google Glass, because everybody saw Google Glass and it failed, and now nobody wants to repeat that exercise, okay? So, Hopefully, your eyesight will be okay. Right, there was a couple more up here. Wow. Are we going to keep going? How long, is everyone getting tired of me yet or not? When you get tired, just walk away and go, oh my god, it's so boring. Okay, go. Thank you for a very interesting lecture. Um, you told a lot about how our future will be amazing with these new technologies, but how about the side effects? I mean, you mentioned one, um, talking about truck drivers, they're going to lose their jobs sooner or later. Uh -huh. I work as a translator and every day <laughs> I hear uh -huh. that people saying that one day you're going to be replaced with uh, Google Translate. Uh, well, who else are in the zone risk? I mean, in the future of five years or something. Uh, I, the point about something like that is that if it's if a machine can do it and could do it almost as well or as good on a very specific repetitive thing like translating words, so you just take an alphabet, two alphabets, work out which ones you know, work out the translation between the two. The, the, so that's what a machine can do, and um, so that is going to be tough for you know everyday translation. That's the thing if that exists. Where it won't be replaced is in complex human to human, human interaction, like diplomatic relations or business transactions. You'll you you'll be fine. You'll be in a job, especially as you're so good at English. Thank you. You're welcome. But but for you know me walking around Moscow or something, going what's that? How much is this? You know, there's a thing in my ear going, what is it? Um, and I, I can I'll be okay. I'll just use that. I won't need somebody. I won't need a translator. And in fact, that never existed before. Because that never existed before, it makes my life better. Yeah, you know, when I'm walking around St. Petersburg and that one. And, uh, and then it makes the economy better because now I can, like, order a order lunch get a taxi and, you know, sit and chat with my friend, etc. So it's actually, that improves life when there was no, it wasn't going to be, a, you weren't going to walk around with me like, yeah, that's uh, 2,200 rubles, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, do you want lunch? Uh, do you want the salad? You weren't going to do that, were you? 
right? So now, you know, smartphones, technology, that's going to improve my life, right? And when I need you for the diplomatic relations, the nuclear weapon negotiations between Putin and Trump, which is obviously going to happen, um, I'll give you my business card. Yeah, that'll get your business card. Cool. Next question. Let's get there. Other questions. Up there. Up there. Down here. Nuclear weapons. Друзья, я скоро приму, к сожалению, непопулярное решение, и мы зададим сейчас три последних вопроса, чтобы мы, во-первых, могли отпустить Майка на интервью, а во-вторых, чтобы мы могли переупаковать площадку для фильма. Три вопроса. Майк, and uh, those guys must take them. most of the people are not doing something with themselves, so they're not changing. And in a few decades, we'll have a lot of cyberers about related people. Do you think humanity will split into new species, or it will stay the one? Definitely. We're all going to be, some people are going to be living underground, uh, and have very white skin, and um, all the hair will fall off, because um, they won't need hair anymore. And then some people will be living above ground, will be really hairy. Um, so it'll be two different species. Um, the ones above ground will have mobile phones because they can get signal, useful. And the ones living under underground will not. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, no, obviously not. Not to split to different species. But as William Gibson, the author, said, he said, the future just happened, it's just not evenly distributed yet, right? So, in other words, there are some very, very high technologies right now, which some people have access to, and many people do not. They're now only starting to deploy smartphones in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, where they can be transformational to small farmers, to local communities, to healthcare, to the health of children, right? Transformation. All of a sudden, you can take an app on a mobile phone and you can put it into the eye of a child and you can tell whether or not it has risen by the time you saw it. Prior, prior to today, you could. And prior to the fact that the mobile phone wasn't available today, you could not. Even though that technology has been around for almost 10 years now. So, Yes, the future just happened. It's just not evenly distributed. It's not about species, it's about access to tech, access to the democratizing influence of technology. Thanks. Hey, Mike. Uh, I, tried to, I tried to learn really simple and uh, short questions about do you use a WhatsApp or Telegram? <coughs> um, both. <laughs> I have nine, I have about nine different uh, messaging apps. Twitter, DMs, WhatsApp, Telegram, Skype, Slack, Signal, Wicca, uh, and then when I'm in Korea, I have Kakao Talk, which is cool. Oh, I've got five messages on Kakao Talk. My Koreans, my Korean buddies. I've got. Fleep. Oh, no, I don't use that. Confide. Rima, Jot, Fire Chat, Zendo, WeChat, Path, no, 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 Solidarity, no, um, yeah, I've got a bunch of them, yeah, but we, Telegram, I use most of the group messages. Майк, скажите, пожалуйста, что вы думаете о мировом правительстве? Известно ли оно с распространением технологий в мире? I hope so. We'll do the downside better than the idiots we've got in charge at the moment. Global government. What the heck? What are you conspiracy?
conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yet. Um, do you know what I think, actually? I think a lot of the tech that we have access to, we're just going to start making our own things, and even though we'll be living in a society that outwardly says, yes, you're British, or you're Russian, or whatever, I think we'll start forming our own groups underneath that, which probably won't have a hell of a lot to do with, um, you know, kind of the boring, boring societies out there. We'll just do our own things. We're all going to go and live in houses and stuff together. Yeah, big, big, big one. Uh, I'm making this up, I'm joking. Um, I'm getting tired, I'm getting tired. Next one. Is it last one? Oh, wait. Well, go. I'm going to talk to you about the messenger. Stop! I need my. Uh, you say that you have eight messengers, uh, and there, there, there is a lot of information for one person. How you, for yourself, decide this problem? A lot of information. No, it's information. A lot of information for one one person. For your, for you personally. How you decide this problem? Because uh, there is a lot of messages, a lot of information, and you have a little bit of time to have a deal with all the incoming information. Yeah. How, how you uh, rule your rules? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> it's very hard. Yeah. And the real problem is that uh, Facebook Messenger, oh my god, so many bloody Facebook messages. Um, geez. Um, I don't. There's no real way of dealing with that. I don't. You know what I do is I like to ignore them. I ignore them and then people go, Mike. 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 There's no real way of doing it. There's, there's no, um, like, you know, Gmail has a priority inbox. There's no such thing as on messenger phone right now. Maybe they will be one day. Mr. Durov, you have to build that to tell you. How are we getting on? My butcher, uh, it's their days, but my show has been Буквально у нас 30, 30 минут есть на то, чтобы переубокавать пространство. Если вы...